I have no doubt that the fundamental source of all our problems, particularly our environmental problems, is population growth. Uh, I can't think of a single problem that wouldn't be easier to solve if there were less people. Uh, and um, the projections now uh, are uh, awesome. In the time that I've been making natural history programmes, which of course doesn't seem very long to me, the population of the world has tripled. Just in my lifetime, and less than my lifetime. Um, and we all know about geometric growth. Uh, and uh, that, if, if we were able, which of course we can't, if we were able to stem it, we might have, be able to have a better chance to grapple with the problems that we've got at the moment. But we can't. Uh, the best we can do is to slow down the rate of increase. We certainly can't stop it. I suppose the biggest uh, impact on human health I've seen is slums. Uh, slums in South America, slums in India, slums in uh, Africa. Um, huge areas occupied by people living whole families in tiny little apartments uh, with no sanitation um, and uh, no future. The one source of comfort, and it's only a tiny f thread, uh, is that the knowledge that wherever you um, empower women, wherever they have the vote, wherever they have had the education, wherever they have the free will and are, and, and are in charge of their own lives and not dictated to by men, um, the, the birth rate falls, which is a very good reason for getting rid of slums, for increasing education and for, for, for uh, dealing with all the other social problems that many people have, many people, uh, places have. Uh, and if, if there is a shaft of light there, but it's only a very thin shaft. Environmental change is not the same all over the world. Desertification is one particular problem. Um, and uh, there's a lot we can do about desertification. Uh, there's a lot we can deal uh, in, in agricultural terms, and special terms, as to how we deal with it. Um, the, the production of power uh, we must be able to solve the problem of solar power in a sensible way. I mean, we're getting better all the time, but the notion that all this power is pouring on the earth, uh, and particularly in the poorer desert regions of the earth, and we do nothing with it, is just absurd. And of course we will, and of course we are doing. I mean, uh, and, and the, the, fi the economic equations are changing all the time. I mean, people used to say, oh yes, well, we can get fresh water from seawater, but of course it's vastly expensive. It isn't so if you can actually get enough solar power to deal with it. And if you get enough water in uh, parts of the world that are now desert and start watering the desert and, and, and making the desert bloom, you can change lots of things. At what stage as human beings uh, begin to understand about the problems of dense populations? And that's a job uh, for sociologists and other people who study these things to convince politicians of what we're doing. But convincing politicians is not enough. You have to convince electors. Uh, and there's, there has been, I think, I mean, a lot of people are very pessimistic and doom-laden and so on, uh, and say that the Green Movement has got anywhere. The Green Movement has made huge strides. It is astounding, the effects of the Green Movement. The fact that, go that, that governments are prepared to make sacrifices to put in, a policy and, in, in place a policy, the benefits of which will not be apparent for long, long after their electoral period. That is a huge advance. Um, and uh, fair play to the electorate, it is the electorate that has demanded that they do that. Uh, the Green Party has demanded that they do that, and the Green Party has remarkable support. But even more important, perhaps, is the fact that there are green wings, as you might say, to every political party. No party now could get into power unless it could say something about what it was going to do with the environment. Well, that is a huge uh, plus for those who are concerned with educating uh, uh, the British electorate on 
uh, on, on uh, environmental issues. The Wellcome Trust is such a unique organisation, I mean, with the sort of income that it has and the sort of funds that it has. Um, and uh, thank God it has administrators who are wise uh, and who are scientists, which is the crucial thing, and not politicians. Uh, and there aren't lots of organisations, many organisations in the world that I can think of, of like that. So the, uh, if it's not unique, it's very nearly unique. And to have great economic power uh, and scientific insight is a, is a very powerful um, pairing that can be, could be and is very effective. We know it. I mean, it doesn't beat the, beat the drum about what it does, but actually the number of places where the, the welcome name is there unobtrusively at the bottom, whether it's dealing with cancer or whether it's dealing with educational problems and so on, is huge. And uh, uh, I don't know whether Sir Henry had any idea as what he was going to do or, or how wealthy his foundation was going to become. But uh, he certainly left a great... Um, a great boon to the world.